Everybody loves to discover things, whether it is a long-lost family member or friend, an artifact or object that seem to have vanished long ago, or perhaps even something inside themselves. Discoveries give people a sense of closure, or in some cases, open up further mystery. All over the world, things are lost and found, but the most exciting discoveries are of things that are never known to have existed. These things seem to crop up in the most unlikely and obscure of places that, unbeknownst to us, are much more important than we may think. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at these three interesting discoveries. Scientists are pretty sure they found a portal to the fifth dimension. Scientists believe they may have found more clues to a possible fifth dimension, which helps in trying to find an explanation for dark matter. Dark matter is hard to detect, as it doesn't emit any visible light or energy. Scientists are adamant that this unseen force is a dominant ingredient that makes up the universe. The supposed fifth dimension is currently understood as a dimension where gravity and electromagnetism combine. This new discovery may not turn out to be as exciting as it might seem at first, but scientists believe it will help us to better understand and observe dark matter in the near future, as well as its impact on the universe. Even though dark matter makes up 75% of matter, it has never been observed. Recent reports suggest that scientists are trying to find dark matter by expanding on the theory of a warped extra dimension, which was first stated in 1999. This new research builds on the idea that fermion masses could be entering a fifth dimension using portals, which in turn is creating dark matter. This new research could be a giant leap forward in our understanding of some of the universe's greatest mysteries, which so far have only been for sci-fi and fantasy writers to speculate. The Pyramid at El Mirador El Mirador, located in El Petén, Guatemala, is an ancient site of the pre-Columbian Maya civilization. It translates as the viewpoint or the lookout and sits in the middle of a thick untouched jungle in the Mirador Basin. It is surrounded by swamps, which the Maya took mud from to create terraces for their farming. The Mirador Basin is about three times larger than downtown Los Angeles and houses multiple cities and temples, the largest of which is El Mirador. Researchers consider it to be the oldest and largest Maya site in the entire world. There are two pyramids, El Tigre and La Danta, the latter being one of the largest ones in the world. First surveyed in the late 1800s, it took nearly 100 years later for a detailed investigation to finally begin. From 1978 to 1983, American archaeologists studied the site and its surrounding geology to create detailed maps and learn about the geography. They were surprised to find that its construction was not similar to other Maya sites in the area. Instead, it seemed to align with pre-classic era styles, which led them to realize just how old and important the site was. It wasn't until 2003 that thorough investigations began, once again led by an American archaeologist. The pyramids in El Mirador were constructed in sections and built to house temples. They were first constructed with stone and then decorated with stucco that depicted Mayan gods and goddesses. Their positioning within the civilization perhaps relates to astronomy and solar alignments. Archaeologists believe the city to be planned, stressing an importance on sacred positionings. The lead archaeologist of the Mirador Basin Project, Richard Hansen, believes that the nearly 50 sites in the basin were part of one of the earliest political states found in Mesoamerica. Some of the world's first freeways can be seen at El Mirador, as they used white causeways to link the different cities within the basin. Researchers concluded that El Mirador first began construction in the 6th century BCE, up until the 1st century CE. It went through periods of construction work and hiatus as generations passed. They believe that although there were probably hundreds of thousands in population, the inhabitants eventually left due to deforestation destroying the swamps and blocking off access to the prized mud, and then finally abandoned once the Maya civilization came to an end. 
there is almost no other information on the site, as excavations only recently began. It is in such a remote place, so it was forgotten for some time until harvesters stumbled upon it and reignited the desire to explore it. Despite two decades of excavation, only a small portion of the structures have been investigated. Codex Seraphinianus When it comes to mysterious books, you might immediately picture the most ancient texts possible. However, one book of intrigue was written and illustrated in the 1970s by a man named Luigi Serafini, who was an Italian artist, architect, and industrial designer. By the title of Codex Serafinianus, this 360-page book is an encyclopedia about a completely imaginary world filled with the strangest images and text in a mysterious and unknown language. Almost like a book from another reality depicting an alien world unlike our own, it contains hundreds of hand-drawn illustrations featuring architecture, unique plants and flowers, food, fashion and many more unusual things. Several of the items closely resemble parallel objects on Earth, such as a fruit that bleeds and a plant that grows to the shape of a chair. Others feature many machines with unrecognizable purposes, maps, human faces, and the completely abstract. What may seem even more bizarre is the writing system. Although it resembles the structure on modern Western writing systems, the letters almost are written like ropes or threads, as if they are strings that can be tied with loops and knots. It almost looks like Sinhala's script, or the writing of the Sinhalese people. Yet the mysterious meaning behind the text and what it means could not be any more different. According to the writer at a talk with the Oxford University Society of Bibliophiles in 2009, he said that the book's text had absolutely no meaning and was a semic. He revealed his purpose for creating such a book was to inspire a sense of awe and surrealness that children first feel when they come across books that they are not yet able to understand. Even if that might be true or not, the book's in-depth structure continues to be a source of wonder for thousands of people. In fact, Luigi Serafini is still alive today. From the publication of the Codex up till now, he had been very happy to see a community grow from the book, and while the apparent meaning of the book is still debated, it has brought a bit of mystery and fun back into many people's lives. But what do you make of these three interesting discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.